Hi, it's Kim. So today I wanted to prepare a video for everyone who may be on the fence about whether to buy an iPad for um, your studies or not. If you want a short answer, then yes, I think it's worth it if you have the budget for it and after purchase you use it regularly. I'll mainly be focusing on its um, functionalities uh, for based around like students and for study in, perhaps in university. Apple is trying to push on the agenda that it's a computer or it's going to replace the computer but we'll get there. I have purchased a 11-inch um, iPad Pro model but the aspects that I'll be going over in this video is um, more about the iPad in general and some of its uses rather than this specific model. So this video I will be going over one, um, the note taking experience, which is what I use mine for 80% of the time actually, because I just bought it for a study. And then two is the convenience factor. Three is laptop versus the iPad uh, argument. I will briefly discuss that as well. And four is the fact that it's Apple. I actually personally do not like Apple, so I'm a bit biased, but I'm going to give a very balanced view on on my views on Apple and iPad products and in general actually and overall the conclusion whether it's worth it. Okay first is the note-taking experience. Uh, let's start with the positive since we all need a bit of positivity in our lives. Uh, note-taking is the main reason I've decided to make the purchase um, and it's the way that I use it for 80% of the time at least and you can easily make annotations on PDFs, um, edit by copying and pasting for, from your previous notes as well, so that's very convenient. Um, since it's different than a sheet of paper, you can easily undo or edit your past mistakes. Uh, the app that I use is GoodNotes, but I do know that Notability is also another app that's very popular amongst um, people who have purchased. The screen resolution depends on which model you get, but if you get at least like the 2020 or 2019 um, models and onwards, then I'm sure that the resolution will be very sharp. Okay, so here are the less positive aspects about the note-taking process. Um, the main downside about the note-taking on experience on the iPad is that you're not writing on paper. Yes, I know, this is the reason why um, I made the purchase, but I find that writing on paper is just overall such a much nicer experience. Uh, the glass is not very satisfying surface to write on. For the Pro version, I'm aware that the tip of the pencil is actually very close to the surface, so you feel like you're actually writing on the surface, but from um, friends who have purchased the iPad Air model, in, I have heard that they feel like it's slightly further away from the actual surface, so have a feel for what it actually feels like to write on a tablet, because it is going to be a different experience than um, writing on paper. So if you're a person who enjoys the overall, like the texture, the feeling of like pen and paper and and the smell books for fun, then you need to weigh up the positives and negatives, like whether this um, lowered ex overall experience of like writing and getting that feedback on from the paper is worth the shift. So it depends on the person. And also I will quickly mention the handwriting aspect. If you have really neat handwriting, um, usually, then there, it, you can look uglier on an iPad. So, but for most of the people with messy handwriting, um, the iPad does some magic and makes your handwriting look kind of good. I'm going to include um, how mine, my handwriting looks different on paper and on when I'm writing on good notes, and. It's for comparison. There are screen protectors for preventing scratches as well as um, giving the users a feel for real paper on the um, iPad. But I don't use them due to the following downsides. So first, it will lower the overall screen quality. So you're paying a lot of money for a very nice screen and you're actually spending more money to make the screen worse. I disagree with using um, screen protectors on my own device, but you can certainly do that if 
um, you really want that feeling of paper for your iPad. It's a thing. And, and the second downside is that it will slightly increase the gap between the, like the Apple Pencil tip and the tablet itself. You are adding like a fraction of a millimeter, but for someone who's writing every day, it can make a bit of a difference as well. Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention about this note-taking experience is like putting a bit of focus on the um, Apple Pencil. Um, so I'm pretty clumsy at times and I have dropped this Apple Pencil many times. Um, I can also like spin it, like, okay. Um, and it doesn't show on camera, but the tip like here is actually chipped like at one place. There's a very small um, chip. So what this means is when I write with it, the line becomes a bit uneven when I'm writing. So Apple is kind of stingy. Like this is going to... Going, this argument is gonna go into like the um, subsequent topic about the fact that it's Apple but they're charging um, exuberant amounts of money for their products but there is no spare tip in the case when you buy an Apple, pen Apple pencil. Now your option when you like drop your pencil and it gets slightly chipped you need to buy a pack of replacement tips. Oh and one final thing which could be a strange point is the thing that I miss about paper is that you can stack paper. I guess I never actually appreciated the fact that paper is quite thin so you can like layer them on top of each other but when you're like working or brainstorming and you have like 10 different sheets of paper you can just spread it all out on your table and then um, you, it's, you're kind of increasing the screen size but for once you get an iPad this is your entire like screen size like <laughs> So you can work with multiple PDFs because there's a split screen um, and capability but you, you're not actually increasing the overall um, screen size because each page is taking up a fraction of your screen. So, so I am getting old and I find the split screen kind of um, not really worth it. So I, maybe I'm better off buying a slightly bigger sized iPad next time. Who knows? It depends on your style of workflow. So the rest of the aspects are much shorter but let's get down into it. Now, the convenience aspect. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but there is still kind of a global pandemic going on. Um, I'm in Australia, so it's calmed down um, for the most part, but it's, it's still a thing, right? In most parts of the world. So with everything going digital, it's not feasible to hand up physical copies of works. And you need to get used to the transition of like going from like physical things to digital. And for people who don't really have a device um, and you're especially when you're like studying or needed for work or something then this could be that one purchase that could make that transition into um, signing like physical uh, documents to PDFs a bit more easier so it's lightweight you don't need to carry around like loose sheets of paper that could go flying everywhere and you're less likely to just lose or get the order mix up because you're carrying a device compared to, I don't know, a stack of 50 sheets of paper that's all separate things. Also, if you are already part of the Apple ecosystem, then there's that added convenience with the Bluetooth pairing and everything. So the third topic, um, that the question that I posed to you at the start of this video, laptop versus iPad. Um, so for the all the people who ha already have a laptop or desktop um, as their official computer, I think it's a good question to ask whether you're what you're hoping to gain from buying an additional device. Um, I personally think that tablets are in their own category, so the size that it's defined by is not um, within smartphones or laptops, and it has its own functionality that I think neither laptops or smartphones can quite um, mimic. So the main um, reason that I ended up buying an iPad, despite already having a laptop or smartphone is due to the pencil. It's the bane of my existence but I still kind of need it. I do understand that this means that if you do choose to buy an iPad then you're pretty much kind of saying that you're willing to spend the extra money on an Apple Pencil. I know there are certain laptop models which does allow you to write on the, on the screen but because it's attached to the keyboard it could be a bit more inconvenient I think. And for the people who are wondering whether iPad can replace the need for a laptop, my answer is mostly. So 
this is dependent on what you use what would you would use a computer for actually it's going slightly into this apple corporation a bit apple is a corporation that wants people to believe that they know what's best for the consumers they are pushing people to make make switches to major tech trends um before people are ready so their newer um ad campaign shows where their stance is um, what, on what they think tablets would be in the future or in the person's life. Decide to buy the more expensive model, the higher storage and better processing power and purchase the keyboard as well. You can do most things um, with uh, what you can with a laptop or desktop, actually. Um, a lot of the major applications you go through for um, most majors, like if you just use mainly Microsoft Word or um, certain programs, um, even things like MATLAB can uh, run on an iPad, so there's that. However, it comes at the expense of la um, reduced convenience and additional cost. So the additional cost includes obviously the pencil, the keyboard, and um, just the fact that it's a very expensive tablet in the first place, and you can get a very good laptop for that price. The convenience aspect in most applications have a much better experience on a laptop and other applications that have been adapted to tablets can often lack certain features but it depends on what your major is if you are in a very tech heavy major um, especially in stem then you would not find this to be able to replace your computer but i have known people who have gone their entire degrees um in like computer science just carrying around their tablet the future is kind of bright because obviously um the developers are working on this as more people more and more people are using ipad and becomes more popular but for the average student at the moment if you're just relying on the ipad it is possible that you're going to run into some inconveniences with all the money that you're spending on these additional purchases you can buy a very de decent laptop you need to consider whether this note-taking aspect that is um more unique to the tablet experience is worth all these additional hoops if you don't already if you don't have a laptop for these other things that you need it for and this is the final topic before the conclusion so i've touched on this slightly but here's the fact that it's apple <laughs> okay so i think people who are already in the a apple ecosystem will find more value in the added cohesiveness um that you get from an additional device then like the, your next tablet is going to be an iPad, like what can I say? But I personally dislike Apple and having an iPad reminds me of some of the things that the company does that is quite selfish. So this is partly due to um, the lack of replacement tips from this pencil in, in the box, but with their vision of where their, app, where their iPad stands in their lineup of current products, I don't believe that they actually think that um, iPad is the computer like it may be for the future but right now it's nowhere near that because they are still updating their MacBook lineup um if they really believe that the new computer was an iPad they would not be selling their Macs at all Apple is wanting people to make this kind of purchase with certain expectations um but I want you to really just take a step back and think about is this with this kind of money like are you actually better off just going with a laptop or if you're not even in the ecosystem then why does it have to be an ipad and that's the kind of question i'm asking myself actually down the line in the future um i'm sure things are going to be much more convenient with just a tablet and it is a, it is the general trend and direction that we are headed in but not at the moment i don't think it's anywhere near that okay overall the question of which model to get, whether to buy an iPad if you already have a laptop and the overall worth of your purchase depends on, like, I guess how you intend to use it and your budget. So if you want to spend a few extra hundred dollars for um, the pro model, then yeah, why not? I think you could consider it as an investment for your studies. As long as you use it regularly, then it's worth it. I personally don't regret my purchase because I do use it pretty much every day, so the cost per use ratio is kind of low at this point. But um, I do still keep around some paper notes, nowhere near as um, before, but the organization and the convenience aspect for me has uh, made it worth it because now I don't like flick through sh sheets of paper just looking for where 
I placed on those notes. Anyways, I hope that this video has helped you decide on whether to make a purchase or not. It's mainly based on my own experience and I have also talked to a few other friends who have bought the same purchases, um, whether it be Air Pro or like uh, MacBooks actually as well. Um, thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and see you in the next video.